Hey guys, I uh, told you I'd bring you this other video, and right now I've got the PMA. She has got it completely wired up, and it is sitting over here, and she's using 16 gauge. My daughter helps me do this, so we're using 16 gauge wire right now, and she has got it all wired up, correct? Three phased. Um, so we're just waiting on it right now for the. Uh, meter to come on there we go so we have right now we have 12.47 volts it has the battery hooked up on it now this is an older battery it is hooked up through the little factory controller so that's just a you know you'll see these all over eBay for about 20 bucks with the meter sitting here we're going to get a reading on it so um, this is the drill that Kara's got it's a big Milwaukee it's kind of almost her size but it's 1200 RPMs, it's set on two, and um, this ain't the regular drill, it's the hammer drill, so it's 1200. Um, you might have a model that's 16, but this one's 12 and seven, so we have it on two for 1200. Now with the battery being at 1247, we're going to have a, probably a little bit of a jump. <laughs> So we have 12.79 it jumped up to, and I believe that was right at almost 50 watts. Um, run it again, Kara. So three and a half, about three and a half to 3.6 amps. Now that's under a load. Wiring's a little bit light gauge. She picked 16 to go under this. This is 12 on this one and 16 here. This is 14 going into 16. So that didn't help, but um, it's showing what we had here as far as the uh, the output, and it raised it up, so you can see that it ran it up to, uh, from 12.47 up to 12.5. I think it peaked at almost 12.8. This is, like I said, it's old battery. But it's still a good battery. I can probably test it and show you that. Now, here's what we're going to be showing you. This is the big deal to do with this generator. This is the generator that uses the vertical bot vertical axis which means the axis is in a vertical position and instead of a turbine that is like this which is horizontal this one is like this and it depends on the use of these little blades here this is a different design than what you see generally so that's a different design right there uh, hopeful design is what I said in the previous video is that this is going to produce more power so this is the one big thing then I've, I've pre-drilled it so I can make the video a little quicker and I've got a short piece in a 10 foot piece of schedule 40 EMT so this is the the heavy schedule 40 EMT electrical conduit and of course a regular coupling on it the 10 inch piece that's in it has already been drilled and I have uh, set it up to where I dimpled where these set screws are going to go this is aluminum very heavy gauge uh, I think it's about 5 16 thickness and it's very heavy gauge it has the set screws on it and I will install this on here tighten them down and you can see that it's flush but here's the best part let me get this PMA out of this and I'll start the video back and show you why all right now we've got the PMA pulled out and we're going to get this flange here this is a speed rail flange and I'm gonna put a link down there to where I get this at but I want to show you this flange is standard of course the flange from China is metric but you'll be able to see here yeah, let me stand back and let her hold this on here you'll be able to see exactly what the diameter here is almost I mean perfect but the holes are off by one millimeter now all four holes are off by one millimeter so what we're going to do is we're going to drill with a half inch bit to increase the size of that because these are these are 12 millimeter here by drilling this out to half inch it's going to allow for 
this here to fit on here. And this will clamp down on inch and a half pipe and you can get them for two inch, but you'll have to notch them out a little bit different. But you'll see there, it's just almost perfect. So we're gonna walk that half inch bit in there and get that cleaned out. So these are seven sixteenths right now. And when we bring them out to half inch, this is going to bolt up using the original hardware from the, uh, the company that made the PMA. So we're gonna do that. And then she's going to be going ahead and getting these blades put on when I mount this over here on the pipe. And you'll see how well this works. Now, the reason you'll ask why does he use the short piece? Well, look where the wires are at. If you ever need access, you can just unthread this. You can take and loosen this up if you have to and let it spin with the PMA. But I've used that so that I can put the long pipe in through the roof of the building or wherever I'm going to put it. And then I'm able to walk up with the PMA in the short piece and just throw it in there. So that's the way I, the reason I use that. All right, now we've got the holes drilled out. Nice. And I kind of give them a little bit of side angle with the drill so that they're nice and clear. And we're going to be putting a little bit of RTV, just a little bit on the inside of this fitting right here, just to keep it from getting a little leak down towards the wiring. Um, it'll squish out pretty good. So I will get that on there and yeah, this she's one's stuck. So she's working on getting the uh, the bolts right now all set up and um, putting them in the PMA and having them ready for the mount. That will mount now on the pipe and this will just drop down onto it. We'll go ahead and have a 12 gauge extension cord wire, just regular outdoor extension cord wire, attached to the PMA and down the pipe so that we can have the attachment finalized for install up on the roof. All right, guys, what I got me some coffee, got the bolts and all that set up. Kira is finishing up right now on the PMA so that we have the flange mounted on the end of it. And over here, you'll notice the two set screws that come with this. And like I said, look at the bottom of the video. You'll see the links to all these parts I use. And back here over on this side, there is two holes that will be opposite over here. And what I'm using is just a set of these safeties. Now this is a machine screw. So you see that tip. Oh, hope you all can see that pretty good. See that tip? It's got a starter tip on it. It's a machine screw, and I went ahead and pre-done this before we got started to make sure that it would all work out. Um, so she's got her all tightened down perfect there. And we're going to go ahead and set it on the pipe. Here, hold on to it, Kira. Get them in there. Okay. And I'm going to spin the pipe here to where it lines up with these holes here. We'll have the, uh, the set screws go down. Now what I did is I took the set screws out, took a small drill bit, just a small, much smaller than the set screw, and then I enlarged it to put a dimple using a quarter inch bit into the metal, just a little bit of a dimple. That's only about a 64th deep, but it, it makes sure the set screw won't change or move on this. Now the PMA, the way it's designed, the pipe will hit the bottom of it it is not a full bore through there. The hole here is 1.9. The hole there going into the PMA is uh, basically about 18 millimeters. So, I mean, it's not going to, the pipe won't, it won't slide down the pipe, so you're fine. So we're gonna get that on there, put these set screws in, and I'll show you what we've achieved. All right, now we've got the heavier 12 gauge hooked up to the existing 14 that's inside here. And what we're doing is we've made a strain relief by taping a loop up here at the top and leaving this part loose. So it's much, much larger than the pipe that it's gonna go into. And we're gonna go ahead and get that in there. The rest of it is hanging out the other end down there. So it's just a big commercial 12 gauge extension cord. Um, we're gonna get that in there. And the next step, showing you how this mounts with these screws that'll be over here. And all I used was an eighth inch bit and then drilled the side, the, uh, the aluminum over here with a 316th 
but just an eighth going into the metal over here so that these screws here which are an eighth would start into the threads they're actually an eighth plus they'll start into the threads that i have over here on the other side all right and that makes sure that this thing can't rotate it's already locked but we want to put a safety on it and i recommend it so this is our setup we'll have the blades on here in a minute i'll i'll uh, show you what she looks like and where we go from there all right guys one of the things you want to make sure you do now she's getting all these blades put on but you want to make sure do not tighten these down um, at all the this thing here will warp super fast it's it's not very thick it's the upper plate it will warp make sure you've got your lock washer and other washer on it and what she's working on right now she's just setting these in so uh, Kira will have all of these put in here in just a few minutes and we're going to slowly walk it all in to make sure that it doesn't have a problem you will strip these threads out be very very careful doing this to make sure you got it now over here you can see i put in my little safety screws they are embedded down in here the uh, the screws are three quarters of an inch long and they, i don't want to shoot them all the way into the pipe so i just stopped them right there so the, as soon as they came through i stopped so i didn't chafe any wiring and the rest of the wire with the that loop you've seen is right here at this joint and we have an additional uh, about 10 feet coming out the end and it was like I said it was an old commercial plug and we're using nothing but regular EMT right here just the standard stuff uh, you get Home Depot for like $45 for a 10 foot joint of inch and a half very very sufficient that's just inch and a half there uh, 50 millimeter here and 100 uh, I don't know was it 49 over here so not a big difference but this fitting this works out perfect make sure you use a half inch bit um, on it just like i did and as soon as she gets finished getting these in here i'll show you why we did it the way we're doing it All right, so now we got all the blades on. She's still working on it. I keep saying we. I'm letting her build this. This is hers. So Kira owns this. Um, I've got an 11-year-old owns a pickup truck and a 12-year-old here who owns her own wind turbine. But they have to build and work on it themselves. So you can see she's working them all in there. And this is a 3 16ths Allen that goes on here. And I believe either a 3 16ths might be 7 millimeter um, or 6.5. And... She's getting all of these set in there to where you can still see there's plenty of space here. There's a lot of room here. And then we're going to work on something different. She's come up with an idea of using a huge, a large pizza pan to connect all of these because cavitation from these blades has been noted as a loss of power issue. So we're gonna look into that. We're gonna be having that out here in just a second. All right, guys, and I'm gonna give you all another addition to here, a fair warning. Um, you see what she's doing right here? She's tapping on the plate a little bit around each one of these and bringing that plate down to close the gap in because these things here in the back kind of get caught on the threads and they'll want to roll, they'll want to push themselves out. So she's working it around all the way and getting it down to where each one just touches to where you still got a little bit of movement in the blades. And then we're going to be doing a measurement from each blade from point to point hooking a tape and coming down to the next blade to make sure these are the same distance in the center from point to point right here and that way if you have one of them that might be too close together it's going to give it a wobble and we're going to try to prevent that so she's worked very hard to have this turbine set up for herself and we want to make sure that we don't screw it up um, the rest of it is just the standard assembly like they're going to show you over here in the uh, paperwork but be careful doing it uh, don't use power tools if you don't have to on this not a good idea it might cause you more problems than you're willing to deal with all right guys I got back in the shop here and Daniel's helping his sister out finishing this thing and she found a small problem with it and I'm gonna let her explain because it's her turbine um, what she's figured out to do with it uh, I figured out to put this pizza pen right here it's aluminum backer with three rivets here in each blade so that the blades won't wiggle. We'll be able to produce the 
power that we're working for. Anyway, uh, you guys like and subscribe. Comment if you want to. Be watching for the next video when we mount this up high. Thank you.